So my name is Chelsea Cooper, and I am uh, an SVP at Oscar Health, the insurance company. I'm sure you've seen the ads uh, during OE around New York. Um, and I oversee our member strategy and operations there. So I've married uh, a Scot, and one of my favorite expressions that they use in the UK is back yourself. Um, and, it, and it refers to essentially a play that you run when you're, when you're playing rugby and you can't quite get the, uh, you can't quite pass, uh, make a pass. And instead what you do is you take it and you run it down the field yourself and try to score. Um, and if you, think about, if you think about that, there's a lot of meaning packed into that. Um, it's about self-confidence. It's about advo advocating for yourself. It's about uh, really leaning in and being fearless in everything you do. So um, we've heard some incredible, incredible stories tonight from these women. Um, and while I don't know many of them well, um, I've got to imagine that they will have had to really live, eat, and breathe that phrase, those two words, back yourself in order to get to where they are today. So when I was um, eight years old, Growing up in a place called Worcester, Massachusetts, also known as the Woo for folks uh, who are from there. Adam Sandler used to do a little spoof on Worcester. Uh, but um, growing up there, I changed schools, and, um, uh, and within a couple of weeks of my new school, I found myself being, uh, I found myself as the new target uh, for the school bully. Um, every day when I walked into class, I could really count on Andrina to call me names, pick on me, all the things that, that, that bullies do. And um, when you're that young, those interactions that you have, I mean, it's your whole world. Um, I have two kids now, two babies now, and I see how those interactions that they have at school uh, uh, really um, impact everything they do. So, um, so those moments uh, when I was little like really mattered. And so every day I'd go home, uh, you know, crying and uh, and really quite upset, and uh, and hope that the next day I would have the courage to stand up. And this went on and on for uh, a long time, for about four years. Um, and one of the things that still haunts me to this day is that uh, at that time I didn't tell my parents. I didn't. Um, Really, uh, I wasn't comfortable telling my teachers, but more, more importantly, I didn't, I didn't have the courage to really stand up for myself. Well, uh, fast forward uh, a few decades, and um, I started working for a new company, a new job, and uh, we were doing well. I had a new team. We were kind of killing it. Um, and, and I remember my boss coming to me, a uh, male boss, and uh, you know, kind of sitting me down and saying, um, you're, you're doing well, you're doing really well, and I want you to take on all these other additional responsibilities. And I remember having kind of that inner sort of stomach ache and thinking, oh, oh man, I don't, I don't know that I can do this. Um, and it was so clear in, in that moment that um, he really believed in me, and I think somebody else kind of shared a similar story, but he believed in me more than I believed in myself. Um, and, and so, uh, was, was really advocating for me, even when I didn't, I didn't have that yet. So, um, one of the things that I found myself doing more and more, though, over kind of middle of my career was, um, was, was finding those opportunities to start advocating for others. And I don't know why it is that I found it easier to advocate for others, but um, then advocate for myself. And I think it's something that as women, we, we do a lot of. Uh, and so um, I, I, there were all, you know, there were a number of moments I can think about um, where I would see talented women. And, you know, one comes to mind in particular where um, I was working uh, in a, a new role with a new team, and I had someone who was maybe a little less confident, a little shyer uh, on the team. And in fact, she was powering all of the, like, analytics and dashboards that one of the, the men on my team was actually getting credit for. And when I kind of dug in and uncovered it um, and, and realized uh, pretty quickly how talented she was, um, I just kept on putting more and sort of more on her plate. Um, she probably didn't thank me for it at the time, but um, 
uh, but putting more and more on her plate. And it was because I just totally believed in her. And it was it was kind of that same thing that I had seen uh, from uh, my male boss years before believing in me. Um, and so I would shove her to speak in front of our whole company. I would shove her to go have lunch with our CEO. And I would shove her to talk to our leadership. Um, and uh, and it... Uh, it really, um, I think, uh, you know, helped her, and ultimately, she just crushed it as I knew she would, um, and um, and I thought the company was really better off for it. So, um, so I, I found myself advocating for others, but um, really, uh, there was a sort of pivotal moment when I just threw sort of all caution to the wind and uh, and just decided to just kind of go for it. Um, I was mo I moved back to London uh, for business school. I had married married a Brit, um, and uh, was going to London Business School. And maybe about six months in, um, an old friend from San Francisco uh, uh, got in touch with me, and his uh, U.S. based um, uh, ride hailing app was taking off Uber. Um, and so uh, Travis asked if I would help uh, first year of business school. Uh, if I would help launch Uber in the UK. And I said, I remember going out to dinners with him over the course of, I don't know, four or five months, trying to introduce him to many other friends that could do this for him. Uh, and said, look, I just moved here. I've got my life. I've just gotten married. Um, I'm starting business school. Um, sort of no thanks. Um, and uh, and uh, finally, um, at one point, sort of towards the end of my first year, um, uh, I ended up you know, kind of going out and finally was convinced that I should do this. And I just said, you know what, I've got business school, um, but I've also got this great opportunity. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to do both. And so over that summer between my first and second year, um, I launched Uber in the UK. Um, and then during my second year of business school, was running it while also juggling a sort of full course load. Um, and it was that moment where I was incredibly like nervous, I didn't know if I could do it. Um, all of those things that I just said, screw it, I'm gonna just go for it. Um, and it was one of the best sort of learning experiences I've had and, and uh, fundamentally changed the way that I think about things. Um, and so um, I guess from sort of my, uh, my, if I could leave folks here with one thing, it's um, when you find that, that like stomach ache, those like inner feelings that are telling you don't do that thing or there's no way um, I can handle it, especially the women out there, um, those are the times that you have to lean in and you have to uh, just jump in both feet uh, and really go for it. And also, if you uh, notice folks around you who, uh, again, especially women, don't have that own their self-belief, um, that's when you have to, I don't even think it's pull them up. I really think it's about shoving them, <laughs> shoving them, telling them they got to they gotta do it. They kind of don't have an option. I mean, the women on my team know that what they know when I'm, I'm just kind of uh, forced them to do things. But ultimately, they come back and they're better off for it. Um, I think I'm better off for it. And actually, I think our, our companies that we work for are much better off for it. So um, thank you all.